So there's this moment where you were in the overtime and yes, then sir. you choked them out. Uh -huh. The hand was there. He's yeah. blocking it. Yes. And it was the natural organic moment. You you just goddamn screamed your ass off. Yes. So take us through that overtime round where, where you got. Yeah. So like first uh, when it was his turn to choke me, um, you know, I was trying to play it somewhat safe in the sense that, you know, I didn't want to make a stupid move. I wanted to make sure that that round I got out and I had a chance to submit him for the win, right? I didn't want to have to make it come down to, you know, another overtime round. That's the only way to be sure is to not get submitted, right? So I spent a little bit of time going to a particular side in the body triangle, waiting for him to fatigue a little bit and then, you know, weasel my way out. He went for a couple different, like, cranks uh, on the back and the shoulder, and I realized that that wasn't the right way to go. So I decided to switch to the other side and it ended up being, you know, better option for me so I'm gonna kind of switch that up in training in training I always go to the first side that I was on and I usually get out um, so that was interesting but then I knew I knew that if I got out and I got to his back I was gonna be able to finish him uh, I just have a high percentage chance of finishing people I have a system of how to finish somebody from the back as they're trying to escape in training and uh, you know I I'm it's a high success rate that's why they call me the lion killer um, you know, I uh, was really making choking guys. That was like the only submission I did for five years, you know. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? The, uh, the choke came in. Once I feel it get tightened, once I feel like a, I can grab my bicep and my hand slips behind the head, I know that it's just a consistent slow squeeze with different parts uh, of the body is going to finish that choke. Um, you know, I have, like I said, I have a system for it. I teach it at all my seminars, um, you know, whenever people ask. And, uh, you know, I think it's real high success. I knew... As I was squeezing, I, I just I could see it slowly him buckling and slowly him uh, getting outwilled into tapping. You know, we just uh, spoke to Professor Andre Galvao, and he's like, you know what, man, I, I'm done with like point system. Maybe even for for the kids after attending EBI yeah, three. Yeah. How are you now in your in your frame of mind as a competition? Is it submission only now? Yes. Yeah. Um, the way the the competitions that I'm doing and the way that I teach my students, everything is geared towards creating the opportunity for submission. It's not about laying back and like figuring things out and like waiting for somebody to make a mistake. It's just being offensive and trying to create opportunities. And that's what I try to do when I'm when I'm competing. I think you know I do it do my best to do it anyway. Maybe sometimes I don't, but and that's the same thing I teach my students. I've been doing that for for a while. You know uh, since the first DB. And since before then, you know, for the first part of my career, I was focused on point-based systems because that was all that was out there. You know, I always was going after the submission. I wanted to get the back first and then rear naked choke guys, but I wasn't concerned with all these other submissions because you couldn't necessarily get points for going for an armbar from mount. You know, a lot of times you got swept to bottom and all that stuff. So I just really think this is how, A, we make jiu-jitsu an entertaining sport where people want to come and watch. They're excited to be here. They're excited to see the matches, all right? Everything ends in submission. Um, and then the other thing is just the, the progression of jiu-jitsu, especially transferring to MMA, needs to be so much more offensive. All right? A lot of jiu-jitsu is just, you know, lay back, defend. You know, if your partner makes a mistake, maybe they go, you go for a guard pass and they turn their back. That's when you get a chance to submit. It's like... You know, this more high-pressure style where you're constantly hunting for submissions is, I think, is far more important uh, for the progression of our sport, and I think that's where things are going in the future. Last question. Yes, sir. What was it like going up against your teammate? Um, I mean, it was just another day in the gym. You know, I was so much more relaxed, but at the same time, uh, it's always a high-pressure match. Like, it's, we have some of the fucking... Oh, just the worst matches in the gym, just so gritty. And I, I train pretty light. Like, um, you know, I train. Chill kill. Yeah, yeah Chill I, tra kill. I train in a way where I could transition and I'm practicing my moves and I'm perfecting my technique. I don't usually train in a way, and even sometimes when I compete, I don't usually move in a way where I'm forcing things. It's like, you know, I move from one position to another and slowly try to entrap my partner in, in the position I want. When I roll with Eddie, things are, comp all bets are off. I'm fighting for my life. You know, uh, I'm doing everything I can to get out of what he's, get he's putting me in and then trying to enter into my attacks. You know, so uh, it was a real exciting match. I didn't even shake his hand at the beginning because I didn't want to think of him as a friend and a teammate during that match. You know, I just wanted to attack. Go this is an entertainment-based, uh, you know, tournament and I just wanted to make sure, you know, the crowd got what they came here for. So I just asked homeboy over here and I was like, what's it like going up against a high-pressure match against a good friend and teammate? By the way, well, I, I hate Eddie. By yeah, the way, just so you guys know. I hate Gary. If you like your training partners, you're not training hard enough. Like, I hate him. He shows yeah. up, and my day is worse. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, so we train guys. really hard every day. It's pretty much like what we do every day, except I'm more nervous than he was this day. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a little bit of a New York versus Jerseyite 
competition going on right here. And when I spoke to Eddie, he was like, no, 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 no. I'm from New York, dog. No, 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 I'm from New York. I'm not from New Jersey. I'm from New York. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. New York won. There's not really a competition between New York and New Jersey. New York wins in everything. Jersey got a little bit of love today. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He comes to New York no, to train. No, no comment. I'll just, you know, I'll let the match speak for itself. But How many no. times have I been to Jersey to treat? No, trade? no he's, he's right. You know, I come up to, to New York all the time and, uh, and I get great training there. But there's also, you know, I came up in Jersey and that, that was where I got my base and, you know, how I got to where I am today. So I have everybody to thank all the people in New Jersey and all the people in New York, you know, we're from, uh, you know, Ocean County, BJJ, Ricardo Almeida and Henzo Gracie, you know, this, you know, uh, they're carrying me through to, uh, to my prime and hopefully just keep getting better and better with this guy and we keep putting submission grappling on the map. Yeah, dude, uh, with California being like the capital of BJJ, but man, you East Coasters are coming in and cleaning house and mopping things up. Yeah. And we definitely appreciate you guys putting it on the show. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.